inviting me to come speak to you here today. And I'm going to be speaking about Wikipedia and Metaverse. And uh, my talk is going to be entirely in English because I unfortunately do not speak any Persian. <laughs> so, what is, um, what is the goal of Wikipedia? Jimmy Wales, when he founded the site back in 2001, stated, imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That's what we're doing. So, Wikipedia is a very idealistic site, and um, <clears throat> we're looking at trying to bring this about specifically for medicine. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a small town emergency physician uh, from Canada. I have some academic uh, affiliations. I'm associated with uh, the University of British Columbia, but it's very far from where I live. Um, I teach medical students uh, in my emergency department, and then I spend half my time um, involved with Wikipedia. I first became involved with Wikipedia in 2007, 2008, when I came across a horribly written article. It was full of mistakes. And then I saw this little edit button, and I realized that I could fix the mistakes on Wikipedia. And then when I realized just how many people were reading this information, um, I became an even more active volunteer since then. So, a question. Is Wikipedia read by nearly everyone? How many of you here have used Wikipedia? So, more or less, more or less everybody. What languages do you guys use Wikipedia? Do you use it in Persian? What percentage of people use Wikipedia in Persian? Both, both English, both English and Persian. Yeah. Do you use it in any other languages other than English and Persian? Welcome. So mostly those two languages. <coughs> so some numbers. Wikipedia is the largest and most popular reference work on the internet. It's the fifth most popular website um, in the entire world. The, come on in. Uh, the first four being Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Yahoo. About half a billion people, or 500 million people, visit Wikipedia every month as of 2003. And they look at a total of 24 billion pages. <clears throat> We've seen an amazing rise in the use of Wikipedia via uh, cell phones via mobile, and um, about 20% of page views now are via people's cell phones. With respect to medicine, all of Wikipedia's medical content in the year of 2013 received about 5 billion page views. Um, and there are approximately 156,000 medical articles um, on Wikipedia in all 286 languages. Uh, English Wikipedia's medical content receives just under half of all paid views for medical content, um, and they, we have about 29,000 medical articles. Persian Wikipedia's medical content receives uh, about 18 million paid views in 2013, um, and they have about 2,800 uh, medical articles, so about a factor of 10 less medical articles in um, Persian than in English. Now, with respect to usage of Wikipedia, um, between 50% and 100% of physicians use Wikipedia in clinical practice in the Western world. So they've done surveys of doctors in the UK, they've done surveys of doctors in the United States, and you know, depending on exactly what population they, they ask and you know, what question they ask, um, about half to all of them respond that they use Wikipedia in some form in their clinical practice. With respect to pharmacists, 35% to 70% uh, admit to its use. Um, and we find that the younger um, the physician, the more likely they are to use Wikipedia as an information source. So for junior physicians, um, they, they say Wikipedia is their most frequently consulted source um, after Google, which isn't really a source, it's a search engine um, that leads you to Wikipedia among other places. And with respect to medical students, about 94, 95% of medical students uh, use Wikipedia. This is just one of the studies briefly going over that. So they found that Wikipedia is uh, almost ubiquitous throughout medical schools for medical education. Um, many, you know, especially um, um, in later years, a lot of people, they start with Wikipedia and then they use Wikipedia to lead them to other sources. Um, you know, so it's more of a starting point rather than a final point as people move through their career. So how does Wikipedia's medical content compare to other 
popular sources of information on the internet. So about 0.3% of everyone who goes online in a given month, um, I mean in a given day, uses Wikipedia's medical content. Slightly less than that use it, the National Institute of Health, which is the second most popular medical source on the internet, followed by WebMD, which is also known as eMedicine, the Mayo Clinic, the, the National Health Services out of the UK, the World Health Organization out of Geneva, and um, there's a proprietary service that's quite popular in North America and Canada called UpToDate, which is um, very well written, but hard to access, um, and often more detailed than many people want. Another analysis that looked, at, that looked at all healthcare sources in the United States said that Wikipedia is the second most used medical resource in the United States. Um, they stated that people, the average person in the United States spends about 12 hours each year looking up health information on Wikipedia. So what does Wikipedia cover? Um, Wikipedia currently covers nearly everything, at least in English. Um, if one was to take the English Wikipedia in um, August of 2010, this is a number of years ago now, I think it's uh, nearly doubled in size since this graph was, t was taken. Here on the left, we have a six foot tall person. To the left of him, or to our right, we see a bookshelf. And each one of those little squares which you can barely make out is equivalent to one volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica. So if one was to print out the Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia it would be equivalent to 1,900 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, as of July, Wikipedia was made up of about 28 million articles in 286 languages, with 4.3 million of them in English. Now, if one was to just look at the medical content, of course, Wikipedia covers everything. Uh, the part I'm interested in uh, is, is mostly the medical aspects of things. If we were to take and print out um, the medical articles in Wikipedia, this is the size of the bookshelf. Bigger than the entire bookshelf, but if those are volumes in the Encyclopedia Britannica, still a great deal of content. <clears throat> Many people predicted that sometime around 2010, Wikipedia was going to cover everything and it was going to stop growing. Um, around 2010, the growth of Wikipedia slowed somewhat, but you know, more knowledge is being created more stuff is being discovered, and that Wikipedia has continued to grow at um, a fairly substantial rate. Does Wikipedia have a huge number of editors? Um, how many people here have edited Wikipedia? So almost half. Excellent. So Wikipedia sort of has a huge number of editors, but the editor community is also sort of fairly small. Um, as Many are probably aware. Anyone can edit Wikipedia. Um, there have been 35 million people who have registered an account on Wikipedia and who have edited somewhat. Many more can edit, edit anonymously under their uh, IP address. A smaller number edit consistently. We see that about 80,000 people make about five edits a month. About 12,000 people make about 100 edits a month. And all these people are volunteers. All these people are doing this for free. With respect to medicine, um, we see an even smaller number are the core contributors of Wikipedia. So in 2013, there was 270 um, human editors who made more than 250 edits. They were assisted by uh, some computer scripts and bots uh, who are very active as well. Um, in all languages, um, there's about 1.1 million edits to medical articles um, made by about 20, uh, 20, 230,000 people. So the number of people who contributed to medical content in 2013 was just over 200,000 people, but the number who seriously contributed were much less than that. Within Persian uh, Wikipedia, um, about 15, um, but yeah, so um, about uh, 15,000 edits were made by 1,263 accounts to medical content on Persian Wikipedia. Um, five people within Persian Wikipedia made 250 edits. We've also looked at who is editing Wikipedia's medical content. Um, this is pri primarily took place in English. Um, <clears throat> and we've found that about half of Wikipedia's contributors, uh, active contributors, have a medical background or are medical professionals. And about half of Wikipedia's medical editors are members of the lay public, people who might have the condition in question 
um, people who might have family members who have the case. And I would like to argue to you that yes, it does. Um, here is a list in English of the most viewed articles within Wiki Project Medicine. This was uh, from a few months ago, April of 2013. We see that the most popular medical article that month was ricin. Um, I think it was this month that someone mailed the President of the United States a package containing some ricin. It got a great deal of uh, news at that point in time because someone was trying to assassinate him. Um, and we see that you know viewership of Wikipedia matches current events. So right now, one of the most popular pages on Wikipedia is Ebola. Um, you know, there's a big outbreak relatively in, um, in Africa of Ebola, and many people are going to Wikipedia because they've read a little bit in the popular press about the disease and they want to get more information. We also see that, you know, major human conditions uh, rank very highly on this list. So we see, you know, bipolar disorder, multiple sclerosis, meningitis, tuberculosis, schizophrenia, Go. All these common human conditions are things that people are interested in. And many of them are getting, you know, every month they're getting close to, um, you know, a quarter of a million, a half a million people looking them up. What are the most popular articles in Farsi? Uh, this is looking at the popularity of the articles um, for 2013. Uh, we find that the first most popular one is Avicenna, who was, um, I don't know much about, he doesn't rank very high in English Wikipedia, but he obviously is very uh, popular uh, among Farsi speakers. HIV AIDS is very prominent, um, very highly viewed. We see that HIV AIDS is, is very viewed in many countries as it's a major global condition. Um, sexual intercourse, uh, it's interesting. Some <coughs> cultures it's viewed very highly, like in English, it's very popular. In some countries, like Portuguese, Spanish, uh, German, it's not very popular. So, um, Angeli, you know, pop culture stuff uh, is very popular. The most popular articles on English Wikipedia often have to do with TV shows. Um, you know, they have to do with movies, they have to do with movie stars. Um, then we see fatty liver, uh, puberty, blood type, hemorrhoid, blood pressure, diabetes, abortion. So all these, all these key, you know, some pop culture topics, some, you know, key, uh, key medical diseases. Uh, of high prominence. So one question I'm often asked from academics um, is, is Wikipedia peer-reviewed? And the answer is Wikipedia is sort of peer-reviewed and it's sort of not peer-reviewed. Um, now, with respect to Wikipedia reliability, um, Wikipedia in an article published in Nature was uh, back in 2005 uh, was found to be as accurate as the Encyclopedia Britannica. They found, um, they've also found that errors are quickly fixed over time, and there's continual review of Wikipedia's content. So every time anybody reads something, they review it to determine whether or not it's accurate, whether or not it's well sourced, whether or not they agree with it. Um, so we end up with a situation which is um, from you know the IT world, where they state many eyeballs make all bugs shallow. So when you have a problem in a text, when you have an error, if many people are looking at it and if many people have the opportunity to fix it, it will often get fixed, it will often get found out. And one thing to keep in mind, you know, with respect to Britannica, you know, Britannica does contain errors. All books can potentially contain errors. Wikipedia can potentially contain errors. So when you're making an important decision, um, I always argue that you should never base it on a single source. Uh, if you're making a life or death decision, you should check multiple sources. Um, you know, one of the books produced by my association, the Canadian Association of Emergency Physicians, they have a number of spots where they have drug doses out by a factor of 10. Um, and if you were to follow this book, you would end up killing people. Um, and I emailed the author a number of years ago, pointing all these errors to him. Um, unfortunately, there was no little edit button that I could click to, to, to fix his book. And he said it just, there just wasn't any financial motive for him to publish a new version of this book to cor correct these few errors in this textbook. So, now, with respect to our semi-formal peer review, um, Wikipedia is an Oracle rating scale. Oracles start out as low class, stub start, C class, middle class, which is a B class, or high-class articles. And our two high-class articles are feature articles and good articles. 
Um, and these articles, you can tell that an article is feature, a featured article or a good article by looking for a little green plus or a little gold star in the right upper hand corner. And these articles have to undergo a semi-formal peer review process before they're deemed to be either a good article or a featured article. Overall, on English Wikipedia, we have about 4,000 featured articles, about 19,000 uh, good articles. For medicine, there are about 58 featured articles and 150 good articles. Um, so, you know, the proportion of our medical content that has passed the semi-formal peer review process is still very small. It means there's still a great deal of work to do, which means we need to convince more medical professionals, more people who are interested in healthcare to become involved and bring Wikipedia's content to a consistently high standard. Now, the best articles on Wikipedia are frequently written by experts. Um, and they're often written by you know uh, one or a few um, uh, one or a few people um, assisted by a greater number. So often there's a, you know one or two key authors for a good article for a feature article with more people helping with you know grammar, sentence structure, punctuation, that sort of thing. A number of our um, good articles, feature articles, are written by people with very little medical background. For example, our article on the ketogenic diet, which is a treatment for epilepsy was written by a father in the UK who has a child with epilepsy, and he became very interested in this topic as he was unable to control his son's epilepsy with, with standard treatment. So he reviewed basically the world's literature on the ketogenic diet. He wrote this very well-written article. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is uh, we were I was reading a review article in the Canadian Journal of Neurology, and I sent it to him, um, seeing whether he wanted to use it as a source for his article. And he emailed me back and he said, hey, I wrote part of this. And these researchers at the Mayo Clinic had copied and pasted from Wikipedia into their, own, into their journal article. So it's not just high school students who are plagiarizing from Wikipedia, unfortunately. It goes all the way to the top. Um, Additionally, we're looking at more formal peer review processes for Wikipedia's uh, content. So currently, we're collaborating with a journal called Open Medicine um, out of Toronto, Canada. And we have submitted a Wikipedia article to them. They have put that article through their standard peer review process. Um, and it should be published in a couple of weeks after I deal with the last few concerns when I get back to Canada. So, And this here will give the authors of the article credit. So the top five uh, authors of this, the top five Wikipedians who wrote this article will get their name on this paper. So there's opportunities if people want to write Wikipedia articles to submit them to journals to get academic credit that's recognized by academic institutions. So with respect to editing Wikipedia, one important thing is to keep in mind who we're writing for. Um, and who we're writing for, we're basically we're writing for everyone. Um, we're writing for the general population. And this can sometimes be tricky. This, um, <coughs> and a few of the things to keep in mind is we try to write our main articles as overviews. And then what we do is we, in English anyway, we have sub-articles that contain greater details. Um, with respect to writing content for other groups, for English, we have something called Simple English Wikipedia, which is attempting to write um, uh, articles for those who might speak English as a second language um, and for those who are young. <clears throat> one, one issue we have sometimes when academics come to Wikipedia is the way they write is too complicated. Um, you know, they write about you know diseases, they add confidence intervals, um, they add a great deal of statistics. And that can be more detailed than many people want. Here's an example of, of, of the nesting of articles. What we see here on the left is we see the management section of the English article on obesity. It's a, a three paragraph general overview of the management of the condition. And then on the right side, um, at the, I mean, at the top there we see main article, it, and then it says management of obesity. And that links to an article that's about 5,000 words that goes into much greater depth about the management of, of, uh, of the condition in question. So <clears throat> one of the things that has brought me here to Iran is this project I've been working on um, um, with Maran the last three years or so, something called Health Information for All in uh, a Language of Their Choice. 
basically what this is, is we're looking at getting Wikipedia being in so many languages is a viable way to address this. Who's involved? Um, I'm working, well, we're working with, a, with an NGO called Translators Without Borders. Uh, they were founded in 1993. They do humanitarian translation into other languages. So they have about two and a half thousand volunteers. They're looking for more volunteers, and um, we're basically taking medical content, and they're translating it. Uh, additionally, there's Wiki Project Medicine, with which I'm involved. Um, it's a group of volunteers within Wikipedia who are interested specifically in medical content. Plus, there's Wikipedians in many other languages involved as well. What are we working on? We're working to take 100 key healthcare articles. Um, and these articles currently, if they were printed out, equal about 2,000 pages of text. So, size of a good medical textbook. We're gradually improving them to a professional standard in English. Once they're improved to a professional standard, we hand them over to translators of those orders. They're all, um, or over to Wikipedians. They translate them from English into the target language, and then the translations are added back to the Wikipedia in that language. An additional aspect of this project is getting easy and inexpensive access for everyone um, in, um, via collaboration with cell phone companies. So this is an example of the, the 100 key article we're working on. The, they're all major human diseases, multiple sclerosis, meningitis, tuberculosis, pneumonia, Parkinson's disease, Down syndrome, hypertension, all um, key healthcare issues. Why is it important to get medical content into other languages? Um, part of the reason is that in many languages, little healthcare content exists. Um, this is partly because the majority of, of medical research and medical publication is in English. Um, during my training, I spent um, time as a medical student in Brazil. Um, and the language there, of course, is Portuguese. And the school I was associated with, the rich students would study in Portuguese. And the poor students would study in English because the Portuguese textbooks cost three times as much as the English textbooks. And Portuguese is a major language. In some languages, that's not even an option. Um, you know, when I went to uh, Nepal, there are no major textbooks in Nepalese. So the students have to study in their second language. And then when you're done medical school and you come out as a doctor, everything you've learned is being in English. And all of a sudden, you need to translate it it back to Nepali to speak to your patients. And, you know, I think a lot is potentially lost in translation. I've heard that in Tanzania, um, a lot of people, rather than seeing the medical doctor, they go and they see the witch doctor, because the witch doctor speaks Swahili, speaks a language that they understand. The medical doctor, unfortunately, speaks English and speaks a language they don't understand. So when they see the witch doctor and they ask, how do you get, how do you get malaria? The witch doctor says, well, it's caused by witches. <clears throat> and that, of course, can lead to bad outcomes. So one of the key languages we're working on translating into is Swahili. Um, so here, here are a few graphs looking at um, uh, issues around language distribution. What we see here on the left um, upper corner here is we see a graph of the world by language speakers. And what we see is we see that, that um, a small portion, like 7% of the world speaks English, 10% of the world speaks some of these major European languages, 15% of the world speaks Japanese and Chinese, Hindi, Arabic, and Bengali make up about another 10%, and then 60% of the world speaks another language entirely. Now, if we look at the internet by language, we see that if you take all pages on the internet, 60% of the internet is English. So for all those who speak English fluently, you're very, very lucky because you have this amazing thing called the internet that's primarily there just for you. And then 25% of the internet is in major European languages, 10% uh, of the internet is in Japanese and Chinese, and 10% of the internet is there for um, the other 4,990 4, languages um, uh, in the world. Wikipedia is a little bit better. Wikipedia is about halfway between um, the demographics of the world and the internet generally. Um, you know, English is still pretty dominant. European languages are still pretty dominant, but there's still a large portion of Wikipedia that's there for uh, those who speak some of the other languages. 
one of the key barriers for people getting access to information <laughs> is um, <clears throat> those in de the developing world have poor access to computers, they have poor access to the internet. But one of the wonderful things is that cell phones are becoming more and more widespread. Um, well, my wife and I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania a couple of years ago. Um, you know, we flew into um, uh, this little town called Arusha. We found a guide. We hiked up to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. My guide barely spoke English. Um, and we got to the top and our guide pulled out his cell phone um, and he texted his wife to let her know when he was going to be back for supper. Um, so, but one of the difficulties that remains in that situation is data chargers are expensive. So even though you might have a cell phone, um, you know, it can be very expensive to access uh, the internet. So one of the solutions that the Wikimedia Foundation is looking at is they've been going to cell phone companies and they've been trying to convince them to give Wikipedia access for free. So without data chargers. So if you have a cell phone coming from that, from that company, you can just go on to Wikipedia. There's no charges associated with it. And the Wikimedia Foundation has, a gr has this deal with, I think, about a dozen or two dozen cell phone companies now, um, which includes about 750 million people um, in Africa, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe and Asia. Now, does anyone know if there's any cell phone companies? I, I, know, I know Saudi Telecom has recently, um, so the National Cell Phone Company of Saudi Arabia, has recently started offering Wiki Wikipedia Zero to all of, their, um, all of their cell phone users. Is there any? Any anyone in any cell phone companies in Iran who are looking at them? What's that? Unfortunately, not. Not yet. Okay. project. Um, you know, we've had many successes. We've had a few difficulties. Um, you know, one of our big successes is so far we've translated about 3.3 million words into 50 or 60 languages. Uh, we're hoping to expand the number of languages we're translating into. Um, you know, we've started some new languages of Wikipedia via this translation effort. Um, a number of the translations have become good articles or featured articles in their respective languages. Uh, and we have some amazing language leads in local languages, including Croatian, Hungarian, Persian, and Romanian. Some of the difficulties we have with translation, um, Wikipedia is written in this code called MediaWiki Markup. Um, it's not so much of an issue anymore, but it, um, it's sort of like HTML coding. Um, it's a little bit distracting when you're used to dealing with a word processor. We've color coded it a bit to make it easier. Another difficulty is some of the smaller languages we're translating into, um, um, like Yoruba. Um, they have a limited vocabulary. Um, and some technical terms, like DNA, uh, like polymerase, doesn't exist in those languages. So one of the things we're working on is we're also working on a simplified version of all the articles, so that for um, less, less um, scientific languages, uh, we'll be able to translate more basic information into those uh, languages. In some languages, such as uh, Swedish, um, there's a great deal of national pride, uh, and they, they, you know, the local Wikipedians wanted the content developed originally in Swedish. They didn't want it translated from English into Swedish. But the difficulty is, even you know, Swedish's top medical experts are publishing in English. So, so you know, their their own community is not publishing their language. Um, so, when it comes to medicine, anyway, one is often forced to look at translation, at least partly. Now, with respect to getting involved, one, you know, as I stated earlier, anyone can come to Wikipedia and edit, but can one come and write what they want? Yes, sort of, and no, sort of not. So when it comes to Wikipedia, one of the keys is referencing, referencing, referencing. If you come to Wikipedia and you add content without a reference, it will often be very quickly removed. With respect to adding medical content to Wikipedia, we have um, a guideline called uh, the Medicine Reliable Sourcing Guideline. And we require, or, you know, we require higher quality sources than for much of the rest of, content, of the content on Wikipedia for good reason. And in a nutshell, we want people to use general or systematic reviews 
um, and reliable position statements from national or internationally recognized bodies. One thing we, of course, um, deal with with respect to the quality of Wikipedia is there's a lot of pet theories, there's a lot of fringe theories. A lot of people want to come and add stuff that might not be notable or stuff that might not be correct. So, you know, for example, there's a group of people who don't think HIV AIDS is caused by the HIV virus. Um, and while there's some published sources on that, there's no really reliable published sources, so their opinion does not get much weight, or any weight really, within the article on HIV AIDS for obvious reasons. Now, this, I know this text is very small here, um, and the room is a little bit bright, but what we see here is we see that this is, this is one of our high quality articles on schizophrenia. What we see is we see that nearly every sentence in this article is referenced. So Wikipedia references much more densely than a journal article. We reference much more densely than a textbook. And we do this because we're not able to verify the expertise of our authors in and of themselves. Our content on Wikipedia needs to stand entirely on the references provided. We can't assume that the person writing it is an expert. So we need everything to be everything to be verifiable. Um, we've provided some some uh, resources on, on the top page in English Wikipedia. Um, each of the little blue things is a link, and this here, if you go to the top page of an article in question, this provides you links out to different sources to help you find high quality, suitable sources for editing. Um, another obvious point, of course, is that we don't allow copying and pasting. Um, in the United States, you know, in Canada, there's something called fair use, where you can take small blocks of text and you can use them without infringing upon copyright. But we don't even allow that fair use um, within Wikipedia because, um, you know, Wikipedia is under an open license. And for it to be under, to, to, to remain under an open license, we can't permit fair use of either pictures or of text. So, and additionally, you know, quotes, should be rarely used as well as that can, you know, you can use very small quotes, but some people say beyond seven words, um, beyond, you know, 15 words, you always you start treading on copyright issues. So please sort of put everything in your own words. Uh, we also have a guideline that goes, um, which is our manual style. Um, you know, we have a specific ordering of sections in English. Uh, we try to write for the average reader, so rather than writing using the term patient or you, um, we use the term person or people. We try not to use um, uh, jargon. Um, we use kidney rather than renal, as that's a more accepted term in English. Um, additionally, you know, for the English Wikipedia, we're trying to write for a global audience, um, so we try to provide global statistics rather than just, just um, you know, disease statistics specific for one country. Um, So, are you guys allowed to edit? Yes, certainly. Um, how it works. So, with respect to um, the background of Wikipedia, there's multiple safeguards in place. So, Wikipedia is not simply anarchy. Um, it doesn't get simply get packed full of um, uh, not notable or wrong information. And there's a number of ways that we keep this from happening. Um, one way is that we have automated tools. So, uh, if somebody comes and adds a bunch of swear words or ads, a bunch of poor content to Wikipedia, half the time this will be picked up by an automated computer program that will revert this edit without any human involvement. The next um, uh, layer of protection is that there's a group of editors called Recent Change Patrollers. And what they do is they just quickly look at each new edit and they say, is this okay? Is this not okay? They do, you know, they don't have any specific um, medical expertise. But you know they're just looking for obvious things. The third level is that um, editors who often have a medical background they put pages they're interested in on their watch list, and what this does is this notifies them when a new edit occurs to that page. They review these changes and they do a more in-depth analysis. You know, did this edit you know properly summarize the source, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There um, are also trusted volunteers called administrators who have additional abilities. Um, so most of Wikipedia can be edited most of the time, but certain parts of uh, Wikipedia can only be edited by established editors, and certain parts of Wikipedia can only be edited by administrators. So for example, the main page of Wikipedia, you need to be an administrator to make a change there because it is so highly viewed. Um, these administrators also have the ability to block editors who have shown that they 
are not here in good faith and that they are causing problems. Additionally, we, ha we, have, we have the ability to blacklist certain URLs. So some people try to promote their business on Wikipedia by adding the URL to the website to thousands of Wikipedia pages. We have simply said, you know, this is never going to be a useful source of information. Um, this is not a reliable source for Wikipedia. There's never going to be any reason to have this URL on Wikipedia, and uh, the, the software just won't allow someone to add it. There are also mechanisms to determine conflict of interest. Um, we, we, a number of years ago, we had an issue with a couple of pharmaceutical companies who wanted to come to Wikipedia and they wanted to remove all the side effects of their medications and they wanted to add all the benefits of the medications. And we were able to determine that these edits were coming from this pharmaceutical company. Um, the pharmaceutical companies in question got some bad press and they have now backed off um, from lately from um, continuing to do that sort of thing. <coughs> so this here is the edit box. Um, and it looks a little bit complicated. Um, and um, Amir is going to be giving a talk this hour, or a, there's going to be an opportunity um, this afternoon. And Amir is going to be teaching um, uh, people hands on how to edit Wikipedia. So for everybody who wants to, to, to stay around, we'll run through these steps this afternoon. But we basically, we have an edit box. And this is, you know, if you hit, hit one of the little edit buttons on Wikipedia, this is what will appear. Um, and then there's some templates that will help you add references. Um, there's this one template called Cite, um, and then you can cite a journal article, for example, and this here little box here pops up. Um, for all journal articles have something called a, well, all journal articles that are indexed in PubMed have something called a PMID. You put that number in, and it'll fill in the rest of the details uh, of the reference for you. So it, it, really is, it really is quite easy, and this here little program will also take care of the formatting issues for you as well. I hear that it is available in Persian. PMID field is, I think it's not. It's sort of available in Persian. Yeah, we can update. Okay. Oh. Hi, Isra. Uh, no, the bad charge is lower. Because it just doesn't occur in my area of the world. So it's really important for people who have specific diseases within their own environment that people in other countries might not have to take pictures of those and release those pictures into uh, the public domain. Um, other things people can work on, you know, if you don't want to contribute content, you can come to Wikipedia, you can provide peer review of articles, suggestions on how to make articles better, you can provide good article review, um, you can correct, you can do simple stuff like correcting grammar and spelling, you can organize content so that it, it fits uh, within the manual style of Wikipedia. You can review new edits. You can become a new um, uh, edit patroller. Um, you, you know, uh, you can also come to Wikipedia and you can add citations. Before 2007, Wikipedia didn't require our content to be referenced. It's only been since 2007 that we've been pushing really hard to require citations. So there's still lots of content on Wikipedia that isn't referenced or that isn't uh, doesn't have a high quality reference associated with it. Um, with respect to improving uh, uh, content, you know, we're working on a number of collaborations with a number of organizations, uh, including the World Health Organization, the Cochrane Collaboration, the National Institute of Health, Cancer Research UK. Um, we're also, we also have a formal collaboration with the University of California, San Francisco. And the project we launched um, uh, about a year ago there is if you go to the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine, in your fourth year as a medical student, which is your final year as a medical student, you can take an elective, a one month elective in Wikipedia. And during that one month, you spend four weeks editing Wikipedia content and trying to improve that, the quality of those articles. So we're running our second pilot project right now in this effort. Um, you know, our first pilot had five medical students in it. Our second pilot has six medical students in it. You know, we're, um, you know, we're still adjusting a few things, but um, we, see, we see huge potential in convincing medical students not just to use Wikipedia, you don't need to convince medical students to use Wikipedia. We want to convince them to edit Wikipedia, um, as that's the only way it's going to get better. Is if is if everybody if everybody gets involved. So why get involved? Well, to summarize, Wikipedia is what the world is reading. Um, you believe all people deserve access to high quality healthcare information. It's a useful method to develop one's own understanding of the field. So when I was in medical school, I had these wise professors 
with gray hair, tell me all these facts. And then in the last, my last 10 years of practice, um, and while editing Wikipedia articles, I've looked at the research behind many of these things we considered as the truth. And many of them, you know, some of them, of course, were, were correct. But others, the foundation upon, the evidence base upon which these facts were coming was very weak. And some of them just weren't true at all. So it's, in, it, it, you know, and, and when you're practicing medicine, you know, well, you might do stuff that doesn't have evidence to support it. You should, it's good to realize that what you're doing is not evidence-based. Some of what you do is evidence-based and you should do it. Some of what you're doing is not evidence-based and you should do it but you should at least know what evidence is supporting your practice. It's also an opportunity to get involved with an international group of academics with whom to discuss medicine. So there are probably about 30 of us who are, 40 of us who are medical doctors who edit English Wikipedia. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm in a non-academic institution. Um, and Wikipedia has been an opportunity for me to become involved with academics while living in a city of 20,000 people, which doesn't have traffic. Um, <clears throat> consider Wikipedia like a Rotary Club, but instead of developing scholarships, we are building an online library for the world. Um, with respect to Wikipedia, there is no money, there is no fame. I'm not sure if, if we can play this or not. No, it's, it's in YouTube. It's, um, it's so It's blocked in your... I, I, ha I have it on my USB stick, actually. So this, uh, let me see if I can find it. So, so um, one of the storytellers at the Wikimedia Foundation went to um, South Africa as, um, I think it's this one right here. It's, uh, this is just a, a quick two, two and a half minute clip. Um, we'll sound play. to uh, to those students. I want to tell you that in South Africa, because the main language is English, they can use uh, the English version of Wikipedia more easily. But in Iran, I want to tell you, because Iranian people do not just use the free uh, Except. 